Hi everyone. As the professor said, I'm working at the Faculty of Civil Engineering in Zagreb and I'll present our case study <coughs> which is partly has been presented on some of the previous meetings because it all started with uh, STSM back in 2016 and it continued to a new STSM which I've been in February. <coughs> so I'll just have a short introduction for you who haven't seen it already. So, uh, my presentation is named Application of Bridge Weight in Motion Measurements in Assessment of Existing Bridges. Uh, <coughs> I divided the presentation as most of others did. So here I will just give a short introduction about the bridge and decision scenario based on assessment strategy. Uh, then short introduction about monitoring method applied and then data and results which we obtain and uh, <coughs> in the fourth chapter the value of information and associated costs. <coughs> so for start, uh, this is the bridge. The bridge is located in Slovenia. It's a, it's a highway bridge, small one, only one single span of 20, almost 25 meters. Cross section of the bridge is classic uh, pre-stressed pre I-type girder connected with monolithic deck. Uh, we had all the original designs and drawings and we did a visual inspection back in 2016 and we built a 3D model in Sophistic software for assessment of the bridge. The bridge is 26 years old, so it's not old bridge. But uh, we use this one because we had all the data and monitoring data. <coughs> so the main objective of this case study is to prove that initial investment in monitoring, in this case weight in motion, will result in extended bridge service life, reduction of overall maintenance costs, and overall optimization of bridge management process. So. <coughs> Back in 2015, I think, we, we started working on multi-level assessment method for existing bridges in Croatia because a lot of them, smaller bridges, are built in the 60s and 70s and they are in very bad state. And uh, we started using for the first time weight in motion measurements. So we developed uh, like three-level assessment method where we have first one without monitoring data, then with short-term monitoring, and with long-term monitoring. Uh, so the point is, if bridge <coughs> passes the assessment on the first level, then you don't have to do the uh, next levels, because every each level is much more complicated, and of course it costs, <coughs> it costs more. So in the first, the first step, just to basic numerical model based on visual inspection and with traffic loads based on design code for new bridges as there are no assessment <laughs> codes uh, or criteria in Croatia or also in Europe. Uh, bridge rating is based on deterministic or probabilistic approach. It's based on the detail of the analysis <coughs> and if the bridge doesn't pass the assessment on this level then we can use the strategy with short-term monitoring, which is done with bridge weight in motion for a short period of time, and if it doesn't pass, then we can take a long-term monitoring data, but it takes a lot longer time to be collected. So about the bridge weight in motion, for those of you who are not familiar, it's a method that measures every vehicle that passes the bridge, uh, it uses bridges as weighing scales, so it uh, has advantages over stationary VIP systems because stationary VIP systems are built in the pavement. So you need to close the bridge, you need to dig in the pavement, and they are permanent. This one is fully portable, so you can apply it on the bridge, measure it, and move it to another bridge and it is placed under the bridge so there is no interruption in traffic which is very important especially if you are talking about highway bridges and also it has higher accuracy and it beside traffic data it provides structural information 
information about how the bridge is responding to traffic loads, which we use, you will see, in this first step. <coughs> Disadvantages is that it requires a certain level of knowledge about the bridges, so you need an experienced bridge designer to, to decide where to put sensors, uh, when to measure, and <coughs> how long to measure, etc. The bridge weight in motion we used is developed in Slovenia since the early 90s and it's called SIVIM and its sensors look like this. They are placed under the bridge. Here we can see a girder bridge. So we have sensors on each girder, on the middle of the bridge and on the beginning and the end of the bridge. Here is one small <coughs> slab bridge also with sensors. So it's uh, now used in more than 25 countries and the data is used in some countries for assessment but in some countries it is used only for some statistical uh, statistics about traffic and here we will show what you can use the data for. So <coughs> uh, traffic data uh, acquired with this system is speed, number of axles, weight and spacing of each axle for each vehicle that passes the bridge. But it also gives what is important, the structural response of the bridge, which gives the influence lines, the, real, the realistic ones, not the theoretical ones, distribution of load over girders, <coughs> if we have a multi-girder bridge, and also dynamic characteristics of the bridge, which can be an important parameter, and especially based on pavement condition, etc. So the application of the data is the most important thing because a lot of countries have the measurements, but they are using it only in traffic analysis. But we can use it for payment in bridge design or assessment, and also in some countries it is used for selection of overloaded vehicles. <coughs> so <coughs> the, <coughs> sorry. the assessment strategies which are including uh, weight and motion measurements are one with a short term measurement and with a long term. In short term we can only uh, get the structural data, the influence lines and the load distribution but it takes only a few hours for a few hundred vehicles. So you can do monitoring on an existing bridge in practically one day or a couple of days if we need a longer calibration. For traffic data and dynamic characteristics we need a lot <coughs> longer period, at least two months, or 100,000 vehicles. But I'm talking only about heavy vehicles. So everything uh, which is which weight is uh, below four tons is neglected. So you need some time to collect 100,000 vehicles, especially if it's not very frequent road. <coughs> so for structural data, uh, as you said, we have realistic influence line which usually shows reduction over the theoretical influence line. Here we can see the, <coughs> the reduction and as all of you are engineers you know that this reduction leads to the reduction of bending moment in the middle of the span which already <coughs> uh, attributes to the bridge load to resistance ratio. And it also <coughs> gives us distribution of loads over girders so you can uh, define or indicate a critical section of the bridge because not every girder is in the same condition, not every girder is loaded the same and on these bridges almost every girder as they are prefabricated they have the same reinforcement and tendons so you can indicate which one is in critical condition. It also reveals non-visible cracks and changes in the stiffness. So here are the just quick ratio of ratio of resistance and loading on each girder. This uh, darker blue, this is done with uh, without any monitoring and this is done with only one day of monitoring and applying the influence line and distribution factor. So already here we can see that it attributes to overall ratio. Then the next step, if bridge doesn't pass its assessment on this level, is to use traffic data, which takes a longer time, so at least 100 vehicles, but with enough data you can build a site-specific traffic load model. <coughs> and with that, you can apply it 
on your numerical model instead of your design uh, traffic model. Here is the ratio <coughs> also resistance to load. So this is without any monitoring. This is with short-term monitoring and with long-term monitoring. So you can see it's almost double the ratio of resistance against load. And also you get dynamic characteristics which can reveal the real state of the pavement, which is also important for bridge design. And this is all deterministic approach. And of course, all this can be done and it should be done on probabilistic level with a calculation of probability of failure and values of uh, reliability index. So this here analysis was done using form method. I'm now working with Professor Tons on a big MATLAB model to do this all with Monte Carlo simulations to get even better results. I think it will be done in coming months. And now the most important part is the part about how much this costs and how much the bridge owners can save using this monitoring method. Uh, this is also not finished yet, uh, as this is posterior decision tree. Uh, we need to relate the cost of bridge with cost of measurements, which is a bit hard because not every bridge, of course, costs the same. Consequences of bridge closing or failure are different depending on the bridge type, etc. <clears throat> so we build a, this is a simple visualization of decision tree where we can we have assessment without any monitoring, with short-term monitoring and long-term monitoring. So the related costs, which we defined or we are in process of defining, is cost of bridge failure, cost of bridge repair, and cost of short and long-term monitoring. But the important thing is that these two costs come, these are direct costs, but you also have indirect costs. Uh, of course, if bridge is closed, then you need to take into account the alternate, ro alternate routes, the traffic jams, the reputation loss, etc. And in case of bridge failure, you can also have extensive damage, not only material, there can also be uh, human lives in danger. So it's a bit hard to, to define them in the model for bridge in general. We can, we can speak in some ratios and we decided to do it like to take a bridge value as one and then indirect costs are one portion of bridge value, uh, cost of bridge repair is other portion of bridge value and we are in the process of finishing that model and then we will have exact number in um, value of information analysis. But what we know from previous experience, mostly in Slovenia, where they are using bridge weight in motion for over 20 years, <coughs> they are using it for decision making and they, in general, they can, uh, they, they came to the conclusion that the overall costs are minimal uh, comparing to the fact that the bridge does not have to be strengthened or replaced or closed for at least 5 to 10 or even 10 to 20 years. <coughs> and if you take into account the cost of the bridge repair and all the indirect costs, then costs of these measurements and analysis are really minimal. Here are some of the costs, but they are really general and they also depend on which country are looking for, but for example, installation of bridge weight in motion for a short bridge is 75,000 euros, which when we think about the prices of bridge design and bridge repair is really not much. For short term, data post-processing is really not much because we only have a couple of hours of measurements and the bridge analysis is also not so much, but of course it depends on the bridge size, bridge type, etc. For longer term, the installation costs the same, but maintenance and post-processing are more expensive and we need to take into account the time that we lost doing uh, measurements. And of course the analysis is also a bit more expensive due to site-specific load models, etc. But when we compare this to the bridge value and to the direct and indirect costs 
or bridge failure or bridge repair, bridge closing, they are really <coughs> minimal when we know what in the first presentations the amounts that colleague from Brisa was speaking about, how much did they spend, and how much are they spending every year on maintenance, then this is really neglectable cost. And I think that's it. So we have, we pre I prepared a couple of questions for decision makers. So first one is, do you perform any type of weighted motion measurements? If you do, the most important thing is what you use the data for. A lot of countries are using the data only for statistics. And you can use it for much more, but you need to have some bridge engineer who knows how to use it. Of course, is this example enough for you to invest if you are not using already? And do you use any other measurement and monitoring technique for assessment? And of course, are you interested in a pilot project? Because if you are, we are willing to, to do a measurement, to do an assessment, if you will if you are ready to finance it. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much for the good presentation and of course the questions are for the audience and especially for the bridge engineers. And we would like to start probably with the first one. Are you using it here in Portugal? Do you use it more than for statistical purposes? Is anybody who would like to answer this question? Is it a reasonable question? Yes. <laughs> so, we're not using it. We're not using it. Okay, okay. simple okay. answer, not using it. Yeah. So, you heard for it? So the Sorry? Have you heard for it? Do you know about it? No, uh, yes. I knew that it, should, it could be done, but never, never been applied. In So this is something new. So still your last question is valid. Yes. yes. That's the most important thing. I was yes. hoping for a note. This is the most important for you. Yeah. Is there any <laughs> is is there any other here who would like to yes? If you can go and show the previous uh, previous slide, right? Because this one. No, the previous one, with, with all the current, uh, the last but one, uh, the, with the costs, where you list all, all, yes, exactly that one. You argue that your costs of uh, monitoring are small, which of course they are, but the only thing in, with that is that uh, you list cost of bridge failure, cost of bridge repair, right? As they are not accounting really for probability for that happening, right? And probability of that bridge actually failing or needing repair are what, 10 to power minus 3? Wow. That's kind of typical for a typical bridge, right? So I'm afraid that you are overestimating here by a factor of perhaps a thousand of cost consequences of failure of repair yeah, if you look versus at the cost of... Look at this bridge. Yes. This bridge is in really good condition. It's only 20 mm -hmm. years old. So this bridge, if we could use, if we get all the data for some bridge from the 60s or 70s, yeah. We would use it, but unfortunately we use this one because this was the only one where we had we had over one year of measurement. Yeah, but that's why we took this one. I, I agree, but the reality is that even if you take the bridge from the 60s, its probability of failure is not one, right? As no, this comparison not one. would uh, would assume, one. because it's still there and probably carrying quite a lot of traffic. So we have to be careful. And I think the gains from monitoring are not that huge. That was a good example by Daniel Zonta couple of years ago with Barcelona where it was, I left with sort of feeling that it's more or less equal what you pay and what you get. Of course, case specific. Thank you for this. I'm sure you have thought about the expected cost in terms also of the probability that it will happen multiplied with the cost given that it happens. It is a very clear statement. Are the any other questions? Are you dealing, or maybe we can have the next presentation? Uh, Sebastian. Maybe in the perspective of uh, that, it's, that it is not 
uh, already applied uh, in an article or seldomly applied uh, virtual rate of motion. Uh, I think it's, um, <coughs> it's important to know that uh, the node models for the bridges have been derived based on bridge rate of motion. So the derivation of the node models can uh, simply be redone with, uh, I think, very reasonable costs. And uh, I think there's a great potential in the knowledge of the actual loading uh, on a specific bridge uh, for the moment and uh, in the perspective of the traffic prognosis for the uh, next years. So one, one addition, and I was happy to work with uh, short-term synthetic mission with Dominic uh, through these issues. Yes, uh, thank you. So it is ah, very good. <coughs> thank you very much. In my opinion, it's still work to be, to be done. Um, I think this is a very good approach. But uh, as the example we, we heard, uh, the, the previous example, the value of this is connected to the, to the study uh, of the behavior, comparing this data with the, with the behavior forecast in the model. So in order to understand this kind of measures should trigger uh, alerts or should trigger actions again. Um, the, the value of this isolated could be nothing uh, because in fact you should measure, you should compare and that should trigger actions and the value because the risk of failure and the, and the, the need to repair is all, always the same. The difference is between the, the, the means you are using to collect information. Yeah, and the interpretation of... The and of should be interpreted. Of course, if you do nothing, if you don't put sensors, and you should just inspect, analyze the, the behavior of the bridge, and you reach the conclusion that uh, an intervention should be done, in fact, the, in the end, um, you should pay the cost of instrumentation. Of course, instrumentation gives us more comfort in the safety point of view. You can control better, and also you can, must, but you must interpret results against the, 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 the behavioral models. And that should be, and in, this, in my opinion, if you create a framework, this, this work should be done in a more, in an effort more effectively. We should not only focus on measuring, and in fact, a lot of technology is arising. We are becoming more and more strong collecting data from the bridges. The second is to put this in the models because all this information should, should be interpreted and then should um, lead to a framework of actions and that framework, in fact, the safe costings are in that framework of actions. Yeah, I mean, uh, I agree that all this data was used to calibrate the existing models because the first model was theoretical and then with more and more data you build a more precise model. And uh, about the, the, the costs and how uh, effective this is, there's a really good example. Uh, in Slovenia they are using it for over 20 years and they are using it with their own department to, to, for decision making and they, they have a list, a uh, table, and it was on, on one of the conferences, I can't remember, uh, they showed how much in millions of euros, they managed to save. I mean, of course, you can always do, do repair, and it would be better. But um, the point is in priority ranking, because you don't have the money to repair all the bridges in country. But in order to, to rank them, which one should be repaired first, and which one can wait for five years, I think in that case, this, this is important, because the best would be to, to repair or replace all the bridges in the country, but you cannot do that. So when you have a lot of them, then 
you should rank them. And for ranking, I think this. For sure. Yeah. But I believe that, uh, I don't know if you understand well about what I said. I believe every owner in the world would like very much to have all the bridges uh, with this, this kind of intervention, yeah. uh, have a dashboard with all the states and all the states of all, of every bridge, every single bridge. But for that, we sh they should have also the trash folders designed and to interpret whether the, the behavior of the bridge is more close to, to the, to the uh, limit state or not, yeah. in order to prioritize. And then, and then, in fact, prepare framework of actions. Thank you very much. Thank you. So what he is actually saying is we need the thresholds, the warning levels, the performance indicator and the associated warning level. And this is an important issue which we have to discuss also in tomorrow. And again, oh, uh, it will be my last session. I will share my life. I'm in the landscape. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for this comment. Uh, this is very much appreciated and goes uh, uh, exactly along the lines uh, we have been setting up this cost action um, and our decision analysis. Uh, yes, uh, the information must trigger actions. And yes, the, uh, the information only provide a value uh, if uh, we can modify the actions. Uh, and actually, uh, we just need to work through this. Uh, we, we have it in our tools. We have it in our tools. We, we can do it. Um, yeah, maybe I should stop now. Thank you very much. Yeah. No, that, that, that was also the reason that the simple example with snow load. You trigger an action, you have a clear threshold, depending, and then you can do two simple actions. So that, that is what, what, what it is important to have uh, actions and so on. So thank you very much for the presentation again.